What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here at About Trout, my name is James Gerritsen. I'm a full-time fishing guide in northern New Mexico and I do fly fishing how-tos, gear reviews, vlog stuff, and tying stuff because it's winter. And for a lot of us, there's not a lot of fishing going on right now, uh, but you should still fish if you can. We're gonna tie ha 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 ha. Un jig francais, oh, that's not even French. I got like a C in French and I took like two years of it, fifth and sixth grade. So probably not the person that you wanna be uh, learning your French from, but you do wanna learn your French jig from me. So let's uh, dive right into it. In the vise, I have a falling mill jig short, size 18, loaded up with a two millimeter bead. And that is also falling mill, tungsten slotted. I'm gonna be tying this with some 18 knot Semperfly Nano Silk in black. And we're just gonna start right behind the bead and wrap back where the barb should be. The French Jig. This is an awesome fly. It's quick to tie, catches fish like crazy. Shout out to Anthony for getting me all aboard the French Jig train. All right, next I'm gonna take some black Coque de Leon. Anywhere from like four to six fibers should be good enough. Um, again, th this is, we're, we're tying trout flies. It doesn't need to be out of control. So I like to even them up on the stem and then trim. And for almost all my nymphs, I like them about the tails to be about three quarters of a hook shank. Come right in here. Perfecto. That's not French, but hey. So we're gonna pull these bad boys back. Just give it a little, little trim trim. And then I'm gonna use some size small silver ultra wire right there. And what I'm gonna do is jam this all up in the bead. It's a very technical fly tying term, so. You guys are learning a lot here on About Trout. Now that I got that in there, I'm gonna grab some Sulky Hollow Shimmer in red. This is the smallest size they make. I think it's 1 16th of an inch in diameter. Don't quote me on that. Whatever the smallest size is, that's what you need. Now I'm gonna marry these up and wrap back to the tie-in point. Touching thread wraps. All right. So now I'm gonna take my hollow shimmer and I'm gonna do like four touching wraps to create the butt. And if they don't touch, then no fish. So once I get about four, four touching wraps, that looks good. I can come in here, tie that off. So what I'm gonna do is just keep that, keep that in there. I'll wrap back so it's nice and even. I'm gonna keep that hollow shimmer long. And that way, as I wrap forward with the hollow shimmer, it's gonna give me a real nice, it's gonna just keep that thing nice and tapered. Or it's gonna keep the, the taper, excuse me. Looks like I missed some turns. It's the nice thing with this 18 knot. You can, you can cover your mistakes. So look, it's not touching, but that's okay. So because I'm YouTube tying again, I want those nice spirals. I'm gonna throw a half hitch right behind the bead. I'm gonna pull my bobbin cradle to the side and we're gonna spin it right through. So. And look at that. See, I covered, covered the gap. I'm gonna just wrap this. Magic. I'm gonna just wrap that right behind the slotted bead. I want a little bit of wire in there to really keep that bead pinned. 
Just helicopter this off. All right, so now we're just gonna take some solar as in the bone dry flavor. Yeah. Voila. If it gets gunked up on you, you can just throw it in the microwave and it's, it's good as new. So I'm just gonna come in here and really we're gonna do this kind of more like a, a Frenchie. You can really get crazy. You can make it more like a Pertigone if you want. Um, but I'm just gonna cover the body and then take my finger and just kind of pull some of this off so those ribs kind of pop. See that? We're making art. So now you got now you've used your finger to remove the resin. I'm gonna take my light and just cook it. And you know that that resin's gonna act like a lens and really give it that that nice flash. All right, we're almost done here. We're gonna grab some Hens Spectra, shade 46, if you can see that, here you go. Shade 46, Hens Spectra. And I like the Spectra dubbing um, because it just dubs way tighter than Ice Dub. It's, it's shredded a lot finer. So I'm gonna come and just do a real tight dubbing loop. I'm sorry, a dubbing noodle, no loops today. But if you watch this channel enough, big, big, big fan. Cause I got this camera in front of my face. It's real hard to get a nice tight noodle, but that's okay. Cause that spectra is really gonna compress. So come in behind the bead, just like that. I think I had a little, too, I think I dubbed too much. So I'm gonna break that off the excess, kind of just tighten that dubbing noodle up right behind the bead, cinch down. I can trim these fibers out because it's going to bother me, but the, the fish, I promise, aren't going to care. So once we're there, you can either hit it with super glue. I'm not. We're going to come in and whip finish and uh, that should do us. We should be, we should be done with the, uh, the old French jig. Little four term whip finish, pull back, come back in here again. Come on now. Pat yourself on the back. Have you ever been to France? Probably not, but with this fly, you feel, you'll feel like you fished there before. This is an absolute crusher. This fly is great where there's, for tailwaters especially, lots of betas, lots of midges, an excellent kind of spring fly. Um, but I fish this every month of the year and it, it always produces. Super easy tie. Thanks again, Anthony, for showing me the light, your French jig. Love it, fish it. Let me know in the comments how it works for you. And I'll check you guys on the next tying video. Peace.